Welcome to A Star Witness. Hello everyone, this is Kayla bringing another episode um, and today's discussion is going to be about um, the commandment thou shalt not kill. Um, first let me apologize for my voice. Uh, it seems to be going out on me uh, this week and I'm taking lots of ginger and lemon and honey um, so that it can come back. Uh, so if my voice sounds a little strange in this episode, now you know why. Um, so before we start, let's say a word of prayer so that the Holy Spirit can lead and guide us. With that, let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for another day of life and health. And Lord, please be with the listeners as well as myself. Please um, be with me as uh, I'm losing my voice. Help it to come back quickly. And uh, please be with the listeners, help what we are discussing today, um, touch their hearts, touch their lives, and help us to continue to learn more of you. And thank you so much for hearing and, and answering our prayer. And we ask all these things in your precious Holy Son's name. Amen. All right. So, <clears throat> When we think of the sixth commandment in Exodus 20, or any of the commandments really, we don't understand its full meaning. And we talked about this last week uh, with um, idolatry. We take it at a face value. Thou shalt not kill, for instance, seems pretty basic and straightforward. But I say that there is more to the story than meets the eye. The Lord wants us to search out the truth, like a detective on a case, leaving no stone left in its original space. We must dig deep and not just take the Bible as just a bunch of stories and leave it at face value. No, we must seek as it, if we were a pirate uh, seeking for buried treasure. And believe me when I say that the treasure that is to be found in the Bible is worth far more than anything that is in the world or that the world has to offer. The truth of the matter is that we only have touched the surface of the truths inside. Thou shall not kill does not just mean that we shouldn't kill other people, although that certainly does apply. It goes much deeper than that, and I want to bring out what that entails. I'm going to be bringing up three points in which this verse is referring to. Number one, abortion. Life begins in the womb of the mother from the very beginning. It does not matter what medical science is saying nowadays to drown out the guilt that people feel when they do an abortion. Life starts right away. Mary, the mother of Jesus, was referred as a mother when she was barely pregnant with Jesus. Mary went to visit her cousin Elizabeth, who was six months pregnant herself at the time, and I believe Mary was going to see her cousin to tell her the news about what the angel had told her and that she was pregnant with the Messiah. What's interesting about this is what Elizabeth said to Mary before she could even get a word out. Luke 1, 39-43, and please feel free to open up your Bibles and read along with me. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste, into a city of Judah, and entered into the house of Zacharias, and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice, and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Notice how she called Mary a mother. Mary was barely pregnant, and Elizabeth called her a mother, because she was one. Mary became a mother as soon as Jesus entered her womb. That goes for any and all women out there. There are some circumstances in which people may not want to keep the child, but that does not mean that you kill it. There is adoption, and you don't need to become a murderer to get rid of a child that did not ask to come into this world. But that baby is a human being, a helpless one at that. The heartbeat of a baby in the womb starts only three weeks and one day after fertilization. The heart begins to beat. During that time, it is grown and shaping into that heart. How can you say that it isn't murder when it clearly has a heartbeat and is growing every single day to become the little baby that will eventually become an adult? Now, if you had an abortion, God is merciful and just, but you must go to him and he will help you. Jesus doesn't want any of us to perish, and he is willing and waiting to pardon all our sins. 
I personally have met someone who has had an abortion and they regretted it and tried to commit suicide after they had an abortion because of the guilt that they experienced. Luckily, their attempt failed. And don't let that happen to you if you are in a similar situation. Seek the help of your loved ones and that of the Lord. And that leads me to number two, which is suicide. Suicide is also killing. You are killing yourself. It did not just say thou shall not kill other people. No, it said thou shall not kill. That includes yourself. If you're feeling depressed and wanting to commit suicide, please talk with your family and get the help that you need. Start reading the Bible, getting out in the sunshine. Sunshine is the most important thing for curing depression. Exercise and a proper lifestyle. All of these things are necessary to get over depression. You cannot do this alone. And you do not have to go through this alone. For the Lord is always there for you, waiting for you with open arms. If you don't have family or friends that you can go to for help, there are hotlines that are available. Please reach out and take the necessary steps to healing yourself. No, the road will not be easy, and it may take some time before you are 100% again, but taking your life is not the answer either. Things can get better, and there are people out there who love and care for your well-being. I care. Jesus cares. Satan would love nothing better than for you to hurt yourself. But let me tell you something. Jesus loves you, wants you, and cares about you like no one else on this planet because he made you in his image, which means that he wants you to stay alive, to learn more about him and the home that he has prepared just for you. So if any of you out there that are hearing this and feel that way, just know that I'm praying for you and that Jesus loves you very much. Suicide can come in different forms. It can take place over a long period of time, which brings me to my last point. Number three, drugs and food. Yes, you heard right. I put food up there. I'll get to that in a little bit. First, I want to address the drugs. When I say drugs, I mean everything from alcohol, smoking, this includes marijuana, caffeine, and the heavier drugs such as meth, cocaine, etc. You get the picture. Drug are a killer for sure. It takes longer, but it most definitely kills you, which falls under thou shalt not kill. The effects may not be seen right away, but over a long period of time, it is very damaging to the body. They cause cancer, loss of brain function, bone deficiency, etc. The list goes on forever. The things we put in our body takes a toll on it, which is why we must be very careful with what enters it. I know addictions are hard and that people who are addicted need help. Their mind is sick and they crave it. I hate the fact that Satan has so many people on these drugs and are addicted and thinking that they would die without them. These people need help, but they must be willing to help themselves. If we take the steps that we are supposed to take, then the Lord will do his part in helping. I have heard some amazing stories from people who were addicted to some pretty heavy drugs and they prayed that the Lord would take the craving away and they were able to stop cold turkey and be done with all the drugs. That doesn't happen with everybody though. Some people have to get help and slowly come off of it. And let me tell you, with God all things are possible and he's more than able to take all cravings away. In all these things, we cannot do it alone. We must get the help that is needed. It may not be um, easy, but with hard work and perseverance and with the help of the Lord, we can do anything. Like Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Finally, we come to the food. What we eat also makes a difference or drink. And when we eat the wrong things, it affects our health. And over time can cause problems which lead to sickness, disease, and an early death. Now you may say, I don't care what I eat. I'm happy. And besides, it's my body. I can do what I like with it. Well, the Bible tells us a different story. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 6, 19-20, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. The Lord died for us so that we can be saved. He is the one who formed us and shaped us. He gave us a lifestyle that would benefit us and make us healthy. Eating right doesn't mean that we have to eat boring or the same things all the time. It just means that we 
put good, healthy food in our bodies. I see so many people in this world who are eating whatever they like and then paying the price for that. Heart attacks, obesity, strokes, diabetes, blood clots, and cancer. Then this is just a few. The list goes on and on. By putting those bad foods in our stomach, we're killing ourselves, which is a type of suicide. I could go on and on, but I think you get the point. And I encourage that you study these things out for yourself in the Bible and the spirit of prophecy. They have a lot to say in all these different points. I thought it was important to share and felt that the Holy Spirit was leading me to do this uh, podcast. Since my last one was on idolatry, it kind of fit in. And I pray this might be a blessing to many. It's my hope and prayer that if anybody is suffering from any of these addictions, because food is an addiction as well, depression or you know thinking about abortion that this may help you want to choose a different pathway there's only one answer that can bring you peace in all this and that is the lord without him we can do nothing jesus is the one who brings hope in our hearts and shows us that life is worth living he would send every angel out of heaven to help you you need only ask for his help doctors and therapists just put you on a pill and that doesn't help Jesus is the only cure to take the darkness away, for he is the light of the world. May the bright and morning star shine bright through you and break through the darkness of sin. And here's a few quotes from the Spirit of Prophecy talking about, um, not only talking about killing and malice toward others, but also um, a little encouraging quote I put at the end. So here we go. I'll read the quote first and then give you the reference so you can go and look it up for yourself. The Savior's words reveal to his hearers the fact that while they were condemning others as transgressors, they were themselves equally guilty, for they were cherishing malice and hatred. They cherished the most bitter hatred of their Roman oppressors and felt themselves at liberty to hate and despise all other peoples, and even their own countrymen who did not in all things conform to their ideas. In all this they were violating the laws which declares, Thou shalt not kill. RC 70.2 RC is reflecting Christ. The spirit of hate and revenge originated with Satan, and it led him to put to death the Son of God. Whoever cherishes malice or unkindness is cherishing the same spirit. In the revengeful thought the evil deed lies enfolded, as the plant in the seed. In the gift of his Son for our redemption, God has shown how high a value he places upon every human soul, and he gives to no man liberty to speak contemptuously of another. We shall see faults and weaknesses in those about us, but God claims every soul as his property, his by creation, and doubly his as purchased by the precious blood of Christ. All were created in his image, and even the most degraded are to be treated with respect and tenderness. God will hold us accountable for even a word spoken in contempt of one soul for whom Christ laid down his life. RC 70.3 Jesus says that whoever shall condemn his brother as an apostate or a despiser of God shows that he himself is worthy of the same condemnation. RC 70.4 Christ himself, when contending with Satan about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, Jude 9. Had he done this, he would have placed himself on Satan's ground, for accusation is the weapon of the evil one. He is called in scripture the accuser of our brethren, Revelation 12.10. Jesus would employ none of Satan's weapons. He met him with the words, The Lord rebuke thee, Jude 9. RC 70.5. His example is for us. When we are brought in conflict with the enemies of Christ, we should say nothing in a spirit of retaliation, or that would bear even the appearance of a railing accusation. He who stands as a mouthpiece for God should not utter words which even the majesty of heaven would not use when contending with Satan. We are to leave with God the work of judging and condemning. Thoughts from the Mount of Blessing, page 55 through 58. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Poor, doubting, discouraged soul, 
I would address you as one of that world for whom God gave his son. He loves you and will save you if you will but receive the gift of his only begotten son. Moses prayed that God would show him his glory, and the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty. This is the character of the God in whom you are to put your trust. God is love. Repeat this sentence whenever temptation presses upon you. Remember that he is just and merciful, true and gracious, and will by no means clear the guilty. God can be just, and yet be the justifier of him that believeth in Jesus. He will accept you just as you are, for there is no hope of your becoming better until you come to Jesus for pardon and sanctification. Mourning and weeping will not purify you. You may mourn your life away in unbelief and in bitterness of soul, but the power to cleanse the vilest sinner is vested wholly in him who can save unto the uttermost. St. April 9, 1894, paragraph 8. God does not ask you to feel that Jesus is your Savior, but to believe that he died for you, and that his blood now cleanseth you from all sin. You have been bitten by the serpent, and as the serpent was lifted up in the wilderness, that the dying might look and live, so Christ was lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Saving faith is simplicity itself. You must cry no more. You must cease to hang down your head as a bulrush. Look to the uplifted Savior, and however grievous may have been your sins, believe he saves you. All the remedies and medicines of the world would have failed to cure one soul who had been bitten by the venomous serpent. But God had provided a remedy that cannot fail. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Be not among the number to whom the Savior said, Ye will not come unto me that ye might have life. Oh, how he longed to save them! For while we were yet sinners, not waiting for us to make ourselves good, Christ died for us. St. April 9, 1894, paragraph 9. Believe now that God loves you, for he hath declared it. And when Satan tries to fasten the burden of sin and horror upon you, take your Bible and read, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You cannot repulse the enemy by relating your fearful doubts, by telling him that you are horrified by the thought that you are lost. All this is music in his ears. He wants to make you as miserable as he is himself. But you can answer him by proclaiming the promise that you believe in the Son, and therefore shall not perish. As you turn your eyes away to the Lamb of God, who taketh away the sins of the world, the controversy with the enemy will be ended for that season. You can repulse him by declaring that Christ was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him, and with his stripes I am healed. St. April 9, 1894, paragraph 10. Take the word of Jesus Christ as more sure and valuable than any word that can come from the human agent. Thank God with your whole heart and soul and voice that you are barricaded with the rich promises of his infallible word, so that the wicked one shall not touch you. God will give you the Holy Spirit, even though it may seem to you that it is too good to be true. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? St. April 9, 1894, paragraph 11. I think those quotes sum it up very nicely, and they're very beautiful words. I encourage you to go and read them for yourselves, and also uh, search in there for all of the topics discussed today. Um, study to show thyself approved unto God and encourage people that you have in your life to seek the Lord that he may be found. And if you know anybody who suffers from depression or uh, wants to get an abortion or commit suicide or is eating wrong, encourage them. Tell them that there's another way. Tell them 
to get the help that they need to get better. And most importantly, remind them that Jesus loves them and that he died for them and that there is a home and a place waiting for them if they are willing to give up the things of the world. It says in Matthew 5, 16, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And with that being said, let your light so shine that you are a star witness for the Lord.